6.48 is the That's time. So Let's mean. go back to our main story, though. Uh, M&S has announced plans to close 100 stores. That's by 2022, yeah, so more than previously expected. Yeah, one of those earmarked is in Northampton, uh, where Danny Hewson is up there for us this morning. Morning, Danny. Good morning. Yes, Louise, there's been an M&S here in Northampton Town Centre for over 100 years. So news this one may close has been met with dismay because this is a high street that is already in trouble. If you just take a look over my shoulder, you can see BHS that closed August 2016 and still lies empty. The other side of the road, there's a Clark's also empty. Clinton's is getting a bit of TLC this morning. That's doing much better. But there are big fears that with the closure of M&S, this high street Street could change forever and really never recover. Well, a couple of people who know all about the potential impact are joining me now. We've got Rob Purdy from the Northampton Business Improvement District, and we've also got Bin Wan from a local cafe, the Matchbox Cafe. Rob, I'm going to start with you. How much of an impact could this make? Obviously, losing a, an iconic brand, a major high street institution, has um, a big impact on a town centre like Northampton and, and many others because there are a lot of other closures going on. So, yes, I think, unfortunately, it will be something that we have to work very hard to turn around. There are some estimates that suggest that footfall here could drop by as much as 20% if the M&S closes. That's going to have a huge impact on the other businesses in the area. It's a significant drop if that figure follows through. Obviously, we'll be doing everything we can in our power to ensure that that footfall doesn't drop by that amount. We have a lot of good independent stores here in Northampton, and we hope that people will come back in and you know, shop here, because if you don't use it, you will lose it. That's, that's the proof of the pudding for Marks & Spencer's at the moment. OK, well, many businesses were drawn here because of Marks & Spencer. Bin Wan opened his cafe, the Matchbox Cafe, just a few weeks ago around the corner. You must be gutted. Shocked to say the least, yes I am. How much of an impact do you think having M&S closed will have on your business? It will have a massive impact because do, we do rely on the footfall or passing traffic with the big brand in front of us. So yes, it will have a big impact. You used to work at M&S as well. How sad are you? Gutted to say the least. It's been a high street brand that I've known and brought up with in Northampton anyway. To lose this in the town centre would be devastating to say the least. Now, it's earmarked for closure, Rob. Do you think there is any way that you can persuade them to keep this one open? We're certainly going to try. Uh, we've talked to the store manager here. We want to help them with the consultation process. We have a bid board meeting on Thursday. This is top of the agenda, working with the Borough Council. We hope we can have a conversation with Marks & Spencers about keeping the store open. We'll do everything in our power to do that. And of course, there is a brand new retail park, M&S, opened fairly recently. People at the time said it would result in the closure. Yes, anecdotally, we hadn't seen that much impact from uh, that store, uh, that retail park. But clearly, M&S's new business model tends to suggest that these retail out-of-town stores are where they want to focus. We hope we can convince them that a town like Northampton deserves a Marks & Spencers, and we know that their loyal customers in the town want that to happen. OK, Rob Purdy and Bin Wan, thank you very much indeed. Of course, all of this is about turning around the fortunes of M&S. In order to do that, they have to get people to buy what they're selling. And there are a lot of people that think perhaps M&S still don't have things right. We'll have the results just after 7. Danny, thank you very much. Worth saying as well, uh, 7.50 this morning, just an hour's time, speak to Steve Rowe, Chief Executive of Marks & Spencer. So we'll know the figures by... We have been hearing that Marks and Spencer's pre-tax profits have fallen by 62%. And that, of course, a day after the retailer announced plans to close 100 stores. That's by 2022. Let's speak now to the Chief Executive, Steve Rowe, who joins us from the London Stock Exchange. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Mr Rowe. I just wonder, first of all, that uh, top-line figure, pre-tax profits uh, fell by 62%. How do you account for that? Well, well the first thing to say is that the pre-tax profits... Uh, we're largely reflecting the underlying charges that we put into the business as a result of those future store closing pro closure programmes and really reflects the scale of the transformation that Marks & Spencer is going to embark on over the next five years. Um, it, it's important, it's vital that we react to the changing dynamics of the customer base and get a Marks & Spencer that is sustainably growing profitably and important, make sure it's special again for our customers. Uh, in terms of the high street, what does that look like? Does it look like job losses, for example, for the stores that you've already announced will be closing and this re reorganisation you're talking about? How many jobs will be shed? Well, we're in co consultation with our employees at the moment in those stores that are affected, and these are really tough decisions. Um, what I can tell you is in, in the closure programme we've had to date, 
86% of our colleagues have been able to be transferred into uh, other local stores. And, and our priority for our colleagues is to make sure wherever possible there's continuity of employment. Uh, but what we announced last year was a transformation that reflects the customer's shopping habits. More and more people are shopping online or out of town. Uh, and we have to modernise our estate to make sure our customers get a great experience. To do that, we are going to change our footprint. We're going to take 25% of the clothing footprint uh, out. Uh, but what we want to do is make sure we have better, bigger stores for our customers with a better experience. Mr. Roy, I noticed the, uh, in, in some of the comments uh, uh, Mark Spencer is making, you talked about accelerated change. Uh, that sounds like business terminology, possibly for almost panic, uh, the speed at which you're, you're changing things. It, it, it's gearing up in a different way than you'd envisaged. Uh, no, I mean, we, we talked um, very clearly about the uh, level of change we needed. The business faces um, you know, s some very hard external factors. We want to be uh, clear about that. We want to make sure we change it for the better of the future. But what we're clear about is we can't do this slowly. We need to make sure we are reflective of the changes in society and the way people shop. And that means it's an urgent that we do this to, to return the business to growth. Um, the store closure programme is important because it reflects our changing customer habits. And, you know, as I said, I believe a third of our business will be online within the next five years. So, uh, so on the so, online no issue, which clearly is so crucial to retailers now, you're trying to target a figure over five years. As I understand it, John Lewis are already reaching though, those figures you're talking about, about the amount of business done online. Why has M&S fallen so far behind? Well, I think when we make comparisons in the total online market, we have to reflect the different types of merchandise that people sell. Uh, and clearly, we have a weighting to garments, which is different to John Lewis's. Um, the key thing is, though, we need to make sure that our website experience is better. It needs to become faster. We need to make sure that the proposition we give to customers in terms of delivery gets quicker. That's what they want. Uh, and we need to make sure that we're able to offer them the garments they want. And, and we're working really hard to make sure that we've got the right merchandise for our customer. Uh, we've spoken to uh, some of your customers in Northampton, and that is one of the places on the high street there where a store that's been there for, I think, 50 years is closing down. Let's hear a couple of their thoughts this morning. One of the best shops, clean, tidy. The staff are so polite, helpful. They say a day. They haven't kept up with the times. Yeah. And also pricing. Even people working now, they can't afford to uh, spend in the likes of those shops. There's beautiful stuff in there. You haven't got the money. The clothes are so dated. No wonder they're closing it. There's nothing in there that clothes-wise they would buy apart from school uniform for the kids because that's still great quality, but it's not got a lot going for it at the moment. So the thoughts that stick out there haven't kept up with the times. Clothes are so dated. I mean, who, who is the M&S customer now? Whatever, in whatever format you're trying to sell to them. Well, well M&S uh, you know, appeals to uh, a vast number of, of customers in the UK. More than 32 million people a year shop with us, uh, and it's a broad church. Um, what they do have in common is a desire for great value garments at great quality, and these are things that Marks & Spencer does deliver. Um, we spent a lot of time over the last year or so working on prices, and again this season we've lowered prices both in clothing and home and foods uh, under the Love It For Less campaign. Uh, and we've increased the number of natural fibres we're offering in garments and improved our fit. The key thing here is that what we've got to make sure is we've got garments that have a broad appeal, but also play to our strengths. You know, we're number one in the UK for our lingerie, from 36% of women in the UK buy our bras. Uh, we're number one in the UK for jeans, we're number one in the UK for kids wear. And we need to make sure that we've got appeal to those customers because those are the key things they shop with us for. But the reality check here, uh, um, help me with this one, um, is the reality that M&S is going to get smaller? No, we believe that by changing the shape of the estate, what we can do is make sure that we have uh, better stores that uh, deliver a better experience for our customers um, with uh, a broader range. And what actually happens is those small stores, which uh, don't really have the full offer, uh, customers are transferred. And if we talk about uh, stores we closed during the year, Warrington Gemini, small store uh, in Warrington, uh, we close it down huge transfer of customers to a new shopping experience at the, the local out-of-town store. Uh, and customers are telling us that they really like that. Um, so we think it's about making sure we've got the right estate, a modern estate that is fit for customers' needs in the future. Uh, Steve Rowe, thank you very much for your time this morning. Steve Rowe, Chief Executive of Mark.
First, our main story in the last hour. Marks and Spencer has announced a 62% drop in pre-tax profits. That's a day after it said more than hundreds of its stores would be closed by 2022. The drop's been linked to the costs involved in the retailer's store closure programme. In the last few minutes, the firm's chief executive, Steve Rowe, told us M&S must improve its online operation. What we're clear about is we can't do this slowly. We need to make sure we are reflective of the changes in society and the way people shop. And that means it's an urgent that we do this to, to return the business to growth. Um, the store closure programme is important because it reflects our changing customer habits. And, you know, as I said, I believe a third of our business will be online within the next five years. Uh, so no panic. I think the last words were no panic. Uh, Danny Hewson is in Northampton for us this morning. He says no panic, but the figures are stark, aren't they? Morning. Yeah, absolutely. They are stark. I mean, it is fair to say that Marks & Spencer has definitely lost its sparkle. A 62% fall in profit at £66.8 But I think what's really crucial is that sales are down across the board by almost 1%. The store here in Northampton has just opened in the last few minutes, but its days are definitely numbered. It is one of 14 announced earmarked for closure yesterday. What they need to do, well, they have to fast forward change and they have said that that is exactly what they're intending to do. I'm joined by Catherine Shuttleworth. One of the things which was very noticeable, Catherine, is they just don't seem to know who their customer is. Yeah, I think m has said this morning they're facing facts and one of them is really understanding their customer in much more intimate detail than they have in the past. You know, successive management teams at m and have travelled in hope. They haven't travelled in the future, which is a chain shopper and that shopper's running away so fast it is difficult to tell what she wants. But this morning m and are saying we've got to sort that out, we've got to sort it out quickly. A few years ago, it seemed impossible to think that they wouldn't have the biggest share of clothing sales, mm. but that's now threatened. Absolutely. You know, we would have always said M&S was the biggest clothing market share in the UK. In the next few weeks, they could be taken over by Primark, who haven't got an online business, but have an offer that shoppers really like. Uh, their pricing feels right and the products look right. And M&S have started to make some big changes in clothing. You know, they're starting to get us back into women's wear in particular, but they know there's a long way to go. And I think it's quite an exciting exciting time for M&S in terms of a change, but we need to see really, really big change from the new management team. OK, thank you, Catherine. A long way to go. It certainly feels that it is. And of course, many more store closures ahead. Well, thank you.